very pleased to welcome to the stage the first speaker of the afternoon, Bill McDonough, known probably to many of you, very distinguished writer, speaker, the real proponent of the circular economy, got there first and is a co-creator of the Cradle to Cradle certification process and Bill, the stage is yours. Tell us more about the Fashion for Good initiatives. <laughs> Wow, you're good at this. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, this is um, a spectacularly humble moment for all of us, I think. It's, it's, uh, it's something that has been in the works forever since human beings started to make things woven and knitted and knotted, which was the beginning of industry. It was manufacture, made by hand. And so as we go forward into the world of, of manufacturing and production, the idea of fashioning endlessly, I think, is an attraction. Because we will fashion endlessly. Because after all, fashion is a verb, too. So as we fashion this future, I think we've thought about fast fashion. And one of the considerations is, is it, uh, is it timefully mindless as we charge into the future at high speed without necessarily considering all the different effects? Have we become timefully mindless? And perhaps if we became timelessly mindful, we could imagine fashioning endlessly with grace and with dignity. So the idea of fashion for good is to lift up uh, an opportunity to present to the industry and say, do all these wonderful things that we do, but let's also start to look at this as a, as a new opportunity to, to lift us up. And when we look at corporate social responsibility reporting generally, we see charts that all look like this, and we talk about trying to be less bad, and our goal is zero. Well, tell that to your children. Our goal is nothing. You're making it difficult for me because I have to do something. And by the way, we're going to be less bad tomorrow, so I'll tell you what I'm not going to do, which is like telling a taxi driver, quick, I'm not going to the airport. So why are we telling the world what we're not going to do? Why don't we tell them what we're going to do? Why don't we get the entrepreneurs moving? Why don't we all start lining up around a set of principal behaviors based on the idea of good and bad? This isn't that complicated in terms of understanding what we're trying to accomplish, because we're gonna put bad below the line, the things we don't want, and we're gonna reduce them to zero. And it's very business-like, up and to the right. Makes sense? And then we're gonna put on top of it what we want. This is the goods. Why wouldn't we sell goods? We talk about them as goods. Let's make goods. So if we look at these infinite choices that we present ourselves with every day, we can decide are they good or are they bad? And we can have intellectual filters that let us imagine what that is. And then we reduce the bad and increase the good. I think good and bad are very helpful to us here because when you think about human dignity and values and we get into questions of right and wrong, these are very complex issues of what is the right thing to do, what is the right way to do it. But good and bad is something a child can help un you understand. Clean water is good. Dirty water is bad. Start there. <laughs> and then we realize that every child deserves and needs clean water. So the good is not just the qualification. It's also the sharing of the good with everyone. So it's not just circular economy, it's sharing economy and shared economy. So as an architect, one of the first things we do, as you can see, is change the way you see. Then we move some furniture around, and then we build. But first, we change the way we see. This is apparently, from what the scientists tell us, how a butterfly sees <laughs> compared to humans. The flower we see on the left looks like that <laughs> to a butterfly. So where's the target? 
what are we going for? What is the attraction? What is the fashion? And design is the first signal of human intention. So what are our intentions? If the world's getting worse because of human behavior, is it our intention to make the world worse? Because if it is, then perhaps we're succeeding beautifully. But if that's not our intention, what might it be? So as we look at fashion, what do we see? Here we see clothing. But when you think about it as a useful thing, we start to see its potential use. But when you get into what there is there, when you look through the microscopes and you look through the filters of ecotoxicology, you start to see all kinds of things when you see like this. And so what if we could see other things than these kinds of things and start to imagine the good in all this? And, and what if we could make the world better because we're here? How exciting that is. And so in the search for the good, we've put out essentially the five goods of Cradle to Cradle certification as simple goods. So first would be good materials. Second would be good economy. Third, good energy, good water, and good lives. And I'll go through these a little bit. So a good material would be safe. It would be healthy. It would be a nutrient for soil or a nutrient for industry. It would be safe for ecosystems. Good materials. Secondly, we would have these in cycles, biological, technical cycles, which allow us to start imagining that something like a t-shirt, for example, could be designed to go back to natural systems, it could be designed to go back to industrial systems, never the landfill, never the incinerator. If we think about it as carbon, fugitive carbon, atmosphere, oceans, durable carbon, materials in recycling systems, and living carbon, carbon in soil. So let us look for durable carbon, living carbon, and forget this, the fugitive carbon. Then, if we look at the economy, it's not just a circular economy, because circular doesn't create good. It's resourcing. So it's a really good idea to have a circular economy, but we want to make sure the materials are good first, because you don't want to circulate bad materials over and over again. We want them to be even upcycled and cleaned. So circular economy is fantastic and is part of this, but also a sharing economy. And perhaps in the end, across generations, the shared economy, good economy. We move from linear economies of take, make, waste to circular economies of retake, remake, retake, remake, retake, remake, restore. We put the re back into resources. We also put the re back into relationships. So we start to imagine our relationships with our customers, that we don't just have natural resources, social resources, economic resources. We have relationships. We're in an economic relationship. We're in a social relationship. We're in a natural relationship. So the materials can be designed to go back to industry forever. We've been able to do this in the building sector for many years. And for us to be able to announce, as we see with this coming initiative, the initiative and others like it, the idea of actually integrating now with the fashion industry, where we even have the idea of the product as a service being modeled uh, in an incipient way here in the Netherlands with even blue jeans as a product of service. Good energy is clean and renewable. That's that. If we think of carbon in the atmosphere today, we realize it has become a toxin. And what we do with toxins is we stop. We don't tell people we're reducing the lead in the river and tell the children we're going to look for a 20% reduction in the lead in the water of Flint, Michigan by 2020. You know, you don't do that. You, when you have a toxin, you stop. And carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is now a toxin. Materials that are in the wrong place, wrong dose, wrong duration are toxic. And we know that, for example, water could be highly toxic if you surround yourself with it for six minutes. Or if you jump out of an airplane, you could hit the water in a very, very short duration, very big dose, highly toxic. But <clears throat> water is, is essential to life. So these materials can all be looked at for their qualities and characteristics as they go forward. And energy can be clean. And we've just seen a solar system of this description 
this is what we call solar orchards, there's a system of this kind, which is rotating solar collectors facing, they're aiming north-south. They start in the morning, they go to noon, they go to the afternoon. And in the process, all the native grasses return because it's like an orchard. It's shade as well as sun. And so we can grow food. We can actually make water out of the air. These collect dew in the morning. We can use it to wash the collectors and then irrigate the soil. So all of a sudden, we find these integrated systems that are really delightful. By the way, there's, there's fiber in this picture, if you'll notice, uh, in the wool as well. So all of a sudden, we're seeing things like this. A, a system of this description was just um, priced in Abu Dhabi, lots of sun there, um, at 2.4 cents per kilowatt hour. That's half the price of wind, half the price of burning natural gas. Game on. So one of the things that we'll talk about here, Fashion for Good, when people say, I'd like to become renewably powered, we'll say, good idea. Let's show you some examples of other people who are doing that so you can share the information with them and they can help you too. So these are exciting things. Good water has to be clean and it has to be available. And we, my first product that I ever worked on uh, other than buildings, was textiles starting back in 1994. And, um, and it was in Switzerland. And we were able to work with chemists and chemical industry and the manufacturers to look at the 8,000 chemicals in textiles and, and made the fabric with 38. And the water coming out of the textile process was as clean as Swiss drinking water. Why not? We can do this. And one of my favorite stories that grew out of that, just so, so people know, is that a company that was recycling electronics said, we have too many um, solvents involved here. And they had read the story of this fa factory. And they spent six years on how to recycle circuit boards from telephones using this idea of flipping water back and forth for various pH and using electroplating. And they now can clean circuit boards of 1,000 different material strippings um, because there's 1,000 layers on an Intel chip, you imagine? And recover precious metals and rare earths and produce $27,000 a ton with the water clean at the end of the process. Clean water in, clean water out. This means we can have factories as complex as electronics in our communities. We don't have to be afraid anymore. I think these are, this is exciting because this is how we live safe and dignified lives in creative ways. And that's really what we're here to serve. And part of that is to fashion endlessly and enjoy total beauty. But it also involves a, a way of seeing the world and people in a dignified way. This is Dr. Uh, Venkata Swami of Madurai, India. He passed away about five years ago. He was a cataract surgeon and gave eyesight to people when they're in their 80s, when they were blind. And he, and he thought, why is it $1,900 to get your eyesight back? I can do it in 10 minutes and one cubic meter of sterility. Um, so what if we gave it away for free so we could afford to make lenses for $2 instead of 200 each? And he did it. And when he passed away, he had given eyesight to 3 million people for free. And by doing that, he was able to offer it to people who could afford anything for $50. This is a way of thinking about the world as a world of abundance and generosity, not a world of limits and greed. This is about sharing. And as we look at a glass of water, if we say it's half full, if we're an optimist or half empty, if it's a pessimist, we also realize that it actually is always full of water and air. And that if you want to increase the amount of water, it might be a good idea to make the glass bigger. Because if you fill it to the brim, it will spill. So what, that's what he did. And so as we look at this idea of fashion for good, we realize what we're looking for here is beauty. How can something be beautiful if it destroys a child's health or the environment? So what is beauty? So if we look at beauty, we can make choices. And so the question becomes, how do we make the world better? Because we're here. And how do we do that? We do that by sharing, sharing a hope that all fashion is good fashion. Thank you.